Okay, are you one of those people who watches Republic TV um, every night or every now and then and thinks that Arnab Goswami is God's gift to te television journalism? Don't go away. This video is important for you as well. I mean, if you've clicked it, seeing the thumbnail, you know that this is not a, a video which praises Republic TV, right? So stay with us. Watch it because this is important because I'll tell you something. And I'm not going to mince my words. You're not going to like it. If you're watching Republic TV, you're contributing to the destruction of India's democracy. Because Republic TV and the journalism that Arnab Goswami does is dangerous for India's democracy. And I'm saying that based partly on the latest WhatsApp chats which have come out. The WhatsApp chats between Arnab Goswami, editor-in-chief of Republic TV, and Partho Dasgupta, the former uh, CEO of India's television rating uh, agency, BARC, which collects television ratings and publishes them every week and tells us which channel is the most popular and which is not. The conversations between them tell us a deep, give us a hint into the deep level of collusion between that rating agency and Republic TV. And this is not just something for the television industry to wor worry about because it has a deep, deep impact on the nature of news that we get in this country. Partly, as I said, my show today is based on those WhatsApp chats, but more importantly, it is also on the kind of debates that Arnab Goswami and Republic TV has been doing and the kinds of debates that might have been propped up by this rating system and which has forced that entire news ecosystem to move in to that uh, entire space to change the narrative in news towards the right, push it towards the right, make it pro-government, make it pro-BJP and anti-opposition. It is a news environment in which anyone who asks question is called uh, anti-national. And if you're watching these channels, you're contributing to that process, which is essential to democracies, questioning. You're contributing to defeating that process, which is inherent and essential to every democracy. Keep watching this show because it's going to shock you. So before I get into the meat of these WhatsApp chats and how they've impacted the rating system, uh, let me quickly touch upon what the rating system is. Well, there is an organization called BARC, Broadcast uh, um, Audience Research Council, and they collect ratings of viewership data from about 40,000 homes. About 40,000 homes covering approximately 1.7 lakh individuals in those 40,000 homes. BARC collects their viewership pattern, how much they watched or which channel for how long, and then publishes it as ratings. Now you'll say, how can 40,000 uh, homes uh, be enough for a country like ours? Partly that's a valid question. There are 834,000 uh, million viewers, television viewers in India, and uh, 40,000 is hardly a number in terms of the number of homes because in a home viewership patterns are more or less the same it's not as if there are three four television sets being watched so there are approximately 200 million homes 40,000 are representing those 200 odd million homes so you can understand that the ratio is highly skewed and this data is questionable especially for news channels where the volume is very very low but forget about that because ultimately what is happening is that this rating system has been accepted by advertisers. Advertisers look at that data and that influences how much they're going to advertise on which channel. And in India, none of us want to pay for the television we watch. So we are, all news channels are entirely dependent on advertising revenue. If there's no advertising revenue, there won't be any news channel. Let us be very clear about that. Now, the point is, how do you rig this system? We know that the way to rig this system is to go to individual homes, find out. Now, these are supposed to be completely secret. These sample homes where meters exist are supposed to be completely secret, but it's an open secret that some people can buy this data and find out where these homes are. Go there, tell, the, give them some money, put a great, nice uh, flat screen television set for them, a new one, Give them a separate connection. Tell them, you watch whatever you want to watch on this flat screen 
television set. But here on the TV set, your original TV set, which is connected to the ratings meter, here is a list of channels you should watch and for how long you need to watch. That's what is given to them. They do that and it artificially bumps up the ratings. These are the allegations that have been made by Mumbai police against uh, Republic, Republic TV. Now, the point is, that is rigging the system through fraud. In this case, the chat suggests that there is collusion between the BAK, the, BAK, the ratings agency, and Arnab Goswami's Republic TV. And you can go to uh, the site of Caravan magazine and get the entire transcript. It's worth reading. It's interesting. It will give you a sense of how this entire game works. Now, uh, the point is, one right at the beginning, when uh, we are at the beginning where Arnab Goswami is about to launch his channel, Republic TV, and he's talking to Parth Das Gupta, and they seem to be very friendly. Again, rem let me remind you, CEO of an agency which collects ratings, and therefore these con conversations are clear conflict of interest. He shouldn't be uh, you know, having these conversations. And by the way, these are just WhatsApp chats. Uh, these are messages exchanged. We don't know, because there are a lot of things where we see... Arnab telling Parthudas Gupta, please call urgent or the other way around. Call. Let's talk. They're meeting. So what conversations are taking place there? We have no clue. Here's the point. Arnab Goswami is being told by Parthudas Gupta, in a sense being advised, then make sure that your disti is good. I suspect disti is um, distribution. That's what it looks like. Distribution means ensure that your channel is reaching an adequate number of homes. You know that not all channels come to your home, right? You don't subscribe to them and some channels don't come to your home even if you want to watch them. That is because those channels are probably not spending enough. They don't have the money to reach your home because cable operators ask for money. DTH operators sometimes ask for money. So it's not a free service. A lot of money is spent by channels on reaching you for their connectivity. So no channel can afford to be 100% connected. It cannot afford to have every home connected, except for Doordarshan, which, of course, is a must-carry. It's a government uh, channel, which every cable operator has to carry for free. Therefore, all channels choose where to be. And how? why do they choose where to be? One, they want to be in their catchment area, right? So if you are, let's say, a Hindi news channel, there's no point in being in the South or being uh, spending a lot of money in the East because you're not likely to get too many viewers there. If you're a Bengali channel, the same thing. You're, there's no point in being in Gujarat or uh, Chennai. Uh, obviously, you're going to spend most of your money in places like West Bengal and some parts of the East where there are people who will watch Bengali news. Now, therefore, all channels have to take that money and decide where to spend their distribution money. Arnab's response to um, Parthadas Gupta saying that I hope your distribution is good. I'm paraphrasing here. You can go and see the exact words there. Arnab says that, uh, yes, and in the South, it's fantastic. Now, Parthadas Gupta replies partly in Bengali and partly in English. And I'm going to translate here. He says, Bole dio where all, which means, do let me know where all. Now, this is something that is not something that the CEO of a ratings agency needs to know from a channel head at all. Why does he need to know that? His job is to be absolutely neutral. If a channel reaches his, uh, where his meters are, well enough. If it doesn't, too bad. That's the way it should be. Is he effectively, and this is a question I'm asking, because it's worth asking this question. Is he effectively suggesting that once he knows where Republic TV is, perhaps the panel can be adjusted, perhaps the sample homes can be adjusted to ensure that Republic TV is there where the meters are. This is a crucial thing because you could be watched by everyone but blocked in the places where the meters are and your rating, your viewership will be zero. Please understand that. But at the same time, you might not be watched by anyone but the people in those meter homes watch you all the time, you will be the number one channel. That's the way it works. It's a bit like, let me explain. Suppose you're taking an exam and, uh, you know, um, and in the university, and obviously 
especially in subjects like humanities, uh, at least in my time, I don't know about it right now, <coughs> no one studies the entire syllabus, right? So you look at the pattern of questions, you decide, okay, I have to, out of these 12 questions, I have to answer six. So let me cover, let's say, 60% of the course, right? And I'm not going to look at 40%. I'll know it vaguely, but 60% is where I'm going to focus. Sometimes what happens is that you are out of luck and most of the questions come from the 40% which you did not cover, right? But your friend probably covered things which are exactly what the question papers ask. Now imagine that the person who set the question paper calls up your friend and says, let me know what are the chapters you've studied? Which part of the course have you studied? Because then I'll set the exam exactly like that. It's a bit like that. I'm not saying this is what has happened, but there's a criminal investigation going on. It's a bit like that. That is what the examiner, in this case, Partho Das Gupta Bark, is asking Arnav Goswami. Let me know where all you're going to be present. Now, we see Partho Das Gupta repeatedly advising Arnav Goswami what to do, how to go about distributing, what stories to do. Because there's one more thing that ratings agencies have, which is they track which stories are doing well when it comes to news. Similarly, in entertainment, they track what genres are doing well. So if there is a thing like Sushant Singh Rajput is not suicide, he's murdered, and let's catch the murderers, which is what Republic TV did for several months, it is possible that he was doing it because the ratings people were watching it, right? And as he got feedback that people are watching, he did more and more of that. And it's pretty clear that that happened because other channels also jumped on the bandwagon. There's one more point in this uh, exchange, these WhatsApp chats, where uh, the Partho Das Gupta, CEO of Bach, ex-CEO, CEO at that time, says that, uh, you know, um, your guys, telling or not, your boys are telling everyone that we are giving you daily reach data. What is reach? Reach tells you how many people switched on your channel for at least one minute in any time period. So if it's daily reach, at least one minute in a day that they switch it on. If it is uh, reach within half an hour, then at least half an hour. Now daily reach data, I'm assuming, comes at the end of the week when uh, Bark releases the data. But in this case, it appears that the reach data was being given in real time every day. Now imagine what advantage that gives to Republic TV. Just think about it. What happens in news channels is that people get, ratings is collected usually from Saturday, Sunday to Saturday, right? And then it is collated and that data is then published by Bach on the next Thursday. So data of Saturday, Previous Sunday to this Saturday is published next Thursday. That's when channels get to know it. So if you've done a show on a Sunday, you will only find out about 10 days later whether it did well or not. 10 to 11 days later whether it did well or not. Uh, and similarly, if you've done a show on Saturday, you'll end up knowing about it five days later. If daily reach figures are shared with a channel in real time and they will know which story has done well, on that particular day. Remember, new, the cycle of news is very short. It's very small, right? News stories last for three, four days in general. You can drag it out, but three, four days, five days. Most other channels will get to know six, seven, eight, nine, ten days later whether a story that they did had viewer interest. But if you are being given daily reach figures, right? This is what one can surmise because Partha Das Gupta is saying that you have gone and told, your boys have told and other channels are saying that I've done it, right? So if that has been done, then this is a direct advantage that that channel will have because they will know how to react on a daily basis. If they see a story is doing well, they'll know whether to go on with it next day. The next day, if the story is done, done well again, okay, let's push it for another day. The third day, if it has fallen back, no need to take the story anymore. Other channels will know a week later, they will pick up last week's data, look at last week's pattern and follow their editorial will be pushed by that. Whereas someone who's getting data unfairly every single day will have the advantage of being able to track stories, 
immediately. There are also conversations that we see where constantly there's talk about which story did well, which didn't. There are conversations about the use of what is called landing page or dual channel. A landing page is when you switch on your TV and your set-top box, the first channel which comes, which you can't change because your set-top box is warming up and that channel is on and you need to wait for about a minute to switch channels and go to the channel that you want. So sometimes what happens is the channels buy that landing page. They are on that landing page. As soon as you switch on your set-top box, that channel comes, whether you want to watch it or not, right? So Republic TV, when it launched, bought several such landing pages. And there was a discussion about it. And there's a point at which Patu Das Gupta says that other channels have complained about your landing page. I've simply ignored them, right? <coughs> There's also another thing called dual LCN, in which a channel is available on two, cha uh, two channel numbers simultaneously. A network available on two channel numbers simultaneously, right? So you're moving from one to the other, chances of stopping in the middle increases. That increases viewership. Both of these are things that Anab Goswami was doing and it was being done by other channels also. Other channels were complaining to Parthadas Gupta about Annab's behavior. Parthadas Gupta was passing out that information to Republic. Parthadas Gupta was talking to Republic saying, we need a joint strategy in this case, which is coming up in the court. Your guys need to be there. Now, there is a direct collusion between Parthadas Gupta as head of Bag and Annab Goswami, editor-in-chief, to keep others out, to make sure that others don't get the high, get high ratings and Republic TV gets high ratings. There's constant advice coming from the top guy who collects ratings. It is like, as I said, being in a class with a teacher constantly helping one student, telling them this is what you have to do to win against other students. That is how it is. And that is a completely unfair advantage. Now I come to this, the part about why this is uh, a danger to democracy. Because till now it looks like, okay, this is just an industry thing. Why should we care? Right? Why should I as a viewer care whether uh, Times Now is rigging ratings and is appearing to be number one? Well, number one thing that you have to care about is that the higher the ratings, the more revenue a channel makes. And if some channels are blocked, some channels are blocked from the rating system, their viewership is shown to be much less than it actually is, then what happens? They don't get any revenue. When you don't have revenue, what happens? You can't hire reporters. You can't hire news anchors. You can't send camera teams to uh, gather news. You can't uh, even get um, guests, good guests in your, uh, in your studio because at the end of the day, experts also are giving you their time. So you have to give them some sort of an honorarium. They're not giving it for you, to you for free. They're taking away time which they could have used for something else and giving it to you. So they deserve some payment there. When you can't do that, what happens? Your channel tends to collapse, right? And the one which makes money can do a lot. It can spend on promotion. It can book uh, ad space, put up billboards, which you can't. So therefore, ratings make a huge difference as to which channel's manner of doing news prevails in the news space. This is what you end to, tend to get. Another thing that happens, when uh, one channel does very well on a certain kind of programming, Everyone else tries to do that program, that kind of program. They all tend to follow. What is the programming that uh, Arnav Goswami has been doing? And in Caravan magazine in the middle of December, uh, Christophe Raffrello, uh, the well-known um, you know, political scientist and India watcher, did a study along with a colleague of his. And that study shows that they took all the debates done by Republic TV and compared it to debates done by NDTV in that same period. And they found that in Republic TV, for every one anti-BJP debate done, right? and by anti-BJP, where the tilt of the uh, debate questions the BJP, there were 12 anti-opposition debates. 12 anti-opposition debates. If you look at the time right ahead of the 2019 elections, the entire space was full of anti-opposition and pro-BJP. So there are pro-BJP and anti-opposition debates. These together account for nearly 50% of all the debates being done on Republic TV. And less than 3% of the debates they did were 
anti-BJP. And even here, they were anti-BJP on certain issues. They were not really taking a big stance on the government. Now, you will say that, what's wrong with that? Some people will be partisan towards the BJP, some towards the Congress. Well, let's talk about NDTV, for instance, often accused of being anti-BJP, pro-Congress. Uh, the same article, you can see, has analyzed the period when the BJP was in power, and it has found that most of NDTV's de debates were neutral. Neither pro-BJP, nor pro-Congress, nor pro-government, they were neutral political debates. In the period when the BJP Modi government has been in power, uh, for every one anti-Congress, anti-opposition um, uh, debate that NDTV has done, it has done two anti-BJP debates. Now, you will say, well, here it is, NDTV is pro-Congress. Well, here's the question to ask. You have to remember that when someone is in power, questioning that government or questioning the party which is in power is the job of journalism. That is the job of journalists. So if the skew is against the government or questioning the government or the ruling party, that is what is expected of journalism. It is not expected that the that journalist will ask questions to the opposition. That is not democracy. Democracy is asking questions to those in power, whether it's the government or whether it is the party which rules. And that is exactly what Republic TV has not been doing. It has been doing the exact opposite. It has been trying to paint the opposition into a corner. And it has, uh, as if you go and read that article, you'll see that the language used against the opposition is simply quite objectionable. It is crass, to put it mildly. Now, uh, you will again say, okay, you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. But here's the trouble. See what happens when the ratings are rigged. What happens when ratings are rigged? When ratings are rigged, in the entire industry, it appears that this kind of programming is being watched. This is what viewers want. And what does the entire industry do? The entire industry tries to copy that kind of program. Now, when it comes to uh, being extreme right-wing, hard uh, extreme nationalist, and I'm, I'm being polite here, really. And uh, being uh, literally jingoistic, right? Often bordering on fake news. There's no one to beat Republic TV, actually. There's no one to beat Republic TV. It's like trying to beat someone at uh, what they're very good at. Because Republic TV has set the agenda. Whatever it does, Bark system war appears to have been rigged to give it an advantage. So... In an agenda where Republic is the best, it is always going to be the best. That is all you get to watch because any channel you switch to is showing exactly that. So obviously, if every channel is showing, let's say, how to make pizzas, which one will you choose? The channel which shows the best pizza chef. You're not going to choose, you're not going to go to channels where the people, home bakers, showing you how to make it. So if Ornab is the best at right-wing, pro-BJP, extreme nationalist, jingoist, anti-Pakistan, uh, kind of anti-liberal, right, kind of uh, programming, then the also-rans are not going to do very well. But the entire space is going to be taken over. Entire new space is going to be taken over by these people. So that is the point that is worth watching out because that is what has caused this great danger to democracy that I'm talking about. An entire new space which is only in favor of the government, which is only in favor of those in power, which only favors the uh, ruling party and attacks the opposition every time it asks questions. It does not attack it only when it thinks that the uh, opposition has asked wrong questions. It attacks it every time the opposition asks questions and it tries to paint all opposition leaders as nincompoops, right? And therefore, it is very, very important that this news atmosphere, this news discourse, this narrative is broken. That it is that people who ask questions, who speak truth to power, find a space to speak. Because only when the rating system is cleaned up when people get to watch and those who are asking questions get rewarded, that others 
will follow suit as well. So that narrative will be cleaned up. There will be a Republic TV. No one's stopping that. But there also should be people who are on the other side of the end. Because if you look at uh, um, the US, for instance, there is a Fox News, but there's also an MSNBC. They have the right to fight it out in whatever way and find their viewers. When the rating systems is skewed, system is skewed in such a way that only Republic TV wins and everyone else loses, then the entire system gets skewed towards one side. All of political discourse gets skewed towards the right. Consent is manufactured in this way. So if you're watching Republic TV, if you're supporting Ornab every day, then you're contributing to that manufacturing of consent, that destruction of democracy.